I completely agree with you, especially because of that cycle, right? And this, this is why when the reports came out, and once again, Glazer being, a, you know, a reliable dude, I was shocked because I'm like, if this is true, then my fate in Giants ownership really just went down the drain. If they're really thinking about getting rid of Gettleman because of what you said, he's not even in the middle of rebuilding yet. He just got finished with the starting phases. He just finally got rid of the terrible contracts that Reese left, the with, left us with. He, he hasn't even started putting in his foundational pieces. I guess you could say he just cleaned the slate. That's all he finished. So when I heard those reports, I'm like, if this is true, man, my faith in ownership is gone because of exactly what you said. You cannot put a guy in the hot seat when he hasn't even left. You know, he started the rebuild. He's not even in the middle of it yet. He's not even, you know, putting together a complete team yet. Like we're at the very beginning in terms of gathering new players, in hey. my opinion. So I'm like, oh, if, I'm sorry. I, yeah, go I, on. Continue what you're saying. Because I'm like, so if that's it, then ownership there's a there's a problem all the way at the top, which has been a point of argument and contention for a couple yeah, of years and now. I'm, as well. I'm so glad that you brought up this topic because I've I've talked to Giants fans. You know, I talk to Giants fans all the time, and I I hear them say all the time that we just started a rebuild. But in the same breath, they're saying, "Well, Dave Gettleman has one more year before I want him on you know on the hot seat." There's no, no logical sense. sense. And, you know, a team you could compare that to is the Cleveland Browns. The reason why, Kush, the Cleveland Browns aren't successful, no matter who they bring in there. Look at their team now. It's garbage, and they have stars everywhere. Offense and defense. It's garbage because they want everything in a microwave. They want to put their product in there. Hold it for two. Hold it for two years, and when they open back up the, the the door, they want a hot and steamy season. They want they want just a, a succulent season, right? They 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 want they want playoffs. They want yeah, yeah, they want playoffs. Mic- they want Super Bowl, and they keep firing coaches. They keep firing GMs. Um, you know, I, I believe their 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 owner's name is Jimmy Haslam, something like that, uh, for the Cleveland Browns. He's terrible. He's absolutely terrible. He'll fire a GM. He'll fire coaches after one or two years. You have to let these guys grow. And, you know, there there, there were some mistakes, obvious mistakes, like, uh, you know, hiring Hugh Jackson. He was a terrible coach. Um, they, they, yeah, <laughs> Freddie Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens. You know, they kept Hugh Jackson longer than they should have. Maybe they were trying to, to, to give the guy a chance. But, you know you you have to let your guys grow and that's not just talking about players man that's that's talking about gms that's talking about the coaching staff everybody has to adjust you know just because everybody exactly, has to evolve exactly just because that. these guys are coaches and they're trainers doesn't mean that they have all the answers let them figure it out let them build their team let them find a new scheme and have them grow together with the players that's the only way you're going to make a successful franchise Look at the Cleveland Browns, and I could I, honestly, Kush, I could see the New York Giants turning into the Cleveland Browns. We're not there yet. We suck, but we're not there yet. But we're going to get to that point where ownership is going to want to bring back the good old days, the 90s, uh, you know, the, the 80s, and they're going to want to bring back the late 2000s. Um, they're going to want to, they, they're going to miss those seasons, and they're going to, want to bring that back and they're going to want to bring it back fast because you know the giants are just a high marketed organization we are new york we are big apple you know we need to win now and that's just unfortunately a terrible decision logically and you're going to turn into the cleveland browns that way i'm telling you right now cleveland wants to get back to who they were what in the 80s or 70s whenever they were like exactly before they've been chasing that hype dream for years you know, you have to allow your franchise to develop. And, you know, I could definitely see the Giants heading down that path. I don't want it to happen. But the Joe Judge um, the Joe Judge signing was definitely a step in the right direction, if I say so myself. Um, but I, I, I hope it doesn't end up that way, um, you know, to end up like the Cleveland Browns. But I'll tell you right now, ownership, the way they're acting, they're, they're, they're learning from Cleveland. I'm glad you brought up that ownership standpoint where it's like they're chasing a pipe dream because I agree with you. I can see that happening. Once again, if this report is true, it's probably already in motion to happen. And I, I'd like to say again, when I talked about and Kid Blue brought up, everybody has to learn, not just the players. Gettleman, and I'm not the biggest fan of Gettleman. I know it might seem like that on my channel, but what I do is I try to yeah. rationalize him to people for the guys that want him to be fired immediately. 
Gelman has changed and learned, especially in this offseason since he has been the Giants general manager. And that's a good sign, right? But another thing about a rebuild, it doesn't have a set like time on it, like, you know, three, five years, whatever. Like, you obviously, you don't want it to be more than five years because then exactly. is it even a rebuild? It's just wasting time. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it also doesn't have like a set. Like if you were to graph it, like I said, line, I said, grow to it. There's going to be stumbles in rebuild. One year, you're going to be progressing nicely. The next year, there might be a stumble. That could be mm-hmm. a combination of things. But maybe the year after that, you get back on your feet. So that's what I'm saying. Like this year, if we stumble, right? If we stumble and we only get like six wins or something, do not let Gavin go. That's, this is another reason to throw at it in addition to everything that Cable brought up. But that, that ownership thing, man. If it's already in motion, the faith, the faith in ownership is already waning. The faith in ownership is yeah, going to be yeah, gone. Yeah, I mean, me. it's 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 right on. It's on the wire right now, man, for me, uh, because they 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 want everything quick, man. They just want everything quick, and I I, I understand why they fired Ben McAdoo. Uh, I understand why they fired Pat Shermer. I understand. Of yeah, of course. I yeah, and I understand that, you and you know, of course, I'll rationalize that. And these coaches didn't last very long. Um, but I hope it was because of the reasons we are thinking and not because of the reasons that, you know, the other reasons like, oh, you know, this these two coaches didn't make the playoffs or whatever it is. It was just they were bad coaches. They weren't a great fit. I just hope they weren't exactly, good as head coaches. I just hope they're not looking at it as, oh, well, these guys were unsuccessful in you know making a super bowl run you know i don't want i don't want them to have that type of mindset because if the ownership has that type of mindset and they're impatient and impatient ownership is a terrible ownership if you're not patient with your workers if you're not patient with your team that you've put up you'll never be successful 